We have here verse 30 of the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, a verse that has been universally recognized as remarkable, both for its brevity and for its depth. Jesus has been, of course, speaking all the way through in this conversation with religious leaders concerning the fact that he is working in concert with his Father. He's been talking about those who are his sheep, sheep that have been given to him by the Father, are protected by Christ for the Father, and of course indicated that no one can take them either from Christ or from the Father. And then as if to bring the most sharp point to it that's possibly uh, conceivable, he gives us here in verse 30 this remarkable statement, ego, the word for I, of course, in the nominative, I, chi, the connective, hopater, I and the Father, and then hen, this is the word for one, it's the neuter, which would, in the ordinary course of events, go to the idea of substance, that there's a substantial connection here rather than simply a personal affiliation, some kind of emotional or even spiritual connection, but this goes more to the notion of substance. And then S men from a me, I am, first person plural, present active indicative, we are. So I and the Father are one. There's been multiple attempts, of course, Herculean efforts by scholars who were more critical and liberal in history to try to avoid the plain sense of this text and to say, well, all that's being suggested here is that we are one in purpose or we're one in heart or in some sort of fellowship, but that this is not to be construed as a kind of substantial union. However, the simple phrase itself really isn't susceptible of that kind of meaning. A person has to bring a considerable amount of baggage to the text in order to reach that, and certainly the people that heard Jesus say it there on that occasion uh, were not the least bit confused about what he said. It was so much so that they immediately took up stones to stone him because what they heard him say they took to be blasphemy. And if they understood it in those terms, then I don't think there's any good reason for us to find some different alternative meaning to that which was plainly what was uh, in the minds of the hearers of what Jesus said, and manifestly that was therefore the intended sense that he planned to attach to the words that he said.